In this Hollywood action movie, Wanted, people with superhuman abilities shoot bullets by swinging their arms really fast. And then the bullet ends up curving. I absolutely love the action scenes of this movie, but the question we wanna try and explore in this video is, does the physics check out? Can swinging your arm really fast with a gun before shooting the bullet make the bullet curve? The answer is, well, let's find out. I think the best way to start is actually with an experiment. Now, I don't have a gun and even if I did, I wouldn't use it, it's dangerous. Well, we can use something non-lethal. See, at the heart, the question that we're trying to really explore is if we swing a bullet really fast before shooting it, would it curve, right? And we can perform that experiment with any object, like say with a ping pong ball. And to swing the ball in a circle, I'm gonna use my mom's embroidery ring. Now initially, I thought of actually attaching tying a thread to it, but it'll be hard to film. And so let's go with the embroidery ring. So after spinning, as I let go of it, hey, did you see that? Look at it in slow motion. If we do motion tracking, we see it comes out in a straight line. Let's try one more time. This time let's spin it fast. Okay, what do we see? Again, if you motion track, you can see it comes out in straight line. So why did the ball go straight? Well, turns out that Newton and a bunch of other folks actually figured this out quite some time back. This moving ball has a natural tendency to continue to move with that same speed in that direction in a straight line forever. That's just how our universe works. And it's only when a force acts on a ball, that force can change its speed and direction and cause it to curve. But if that force disappears, the ball would again continue moving in a straight line forever. So coming back to our experiment, at this moment, our ball is directed this way. And so its natural tendency is to continue to move in that direction forever. However, because it's being pressed against the ring, there are microscopic compressions happening over there like a spring and when they uncompress, the ring pushes back on that ball towards the center. And it's this force that keeps changing the direction of the ball, making it curve. But when we let go of that ring, the ring disappears, the force disappears, and the ball continues to go in a straight line. And if you spin the ring really fast, all it does is add more speed to our ping pong ball when we let go of it. The story is exactly the same with our gun and bullet. When you swing your arm, it's the gun that's putting a force on the bullet, causing it to curve. The same microscopic compressions. But once the bullet leaves, that force disappears and the bullet would go in a straight line, just like with our ping pong ball. So the only effect of spinning your arm like that is that you add additional speed to the bullet once it exits the gun. Which means even if you could spin your arm at superhuman speeds, let's say, I don't know, maybe 10 times the speed of the bullet, Yes, the bullet now will come out insanely fast, probably 10 times the speed as before, but it would still come out straight. Now, of course, after that, gravity does put a force on it downwards, making it curve down, but that's besides the point, right? Because we're talking about the sideward curves, not the downward curve. So, end of story, right? You can't curve a bullet by swinging your arms. The movie is rubbish. Oh, no, 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 we are just beginning because so far we have ignored something really important, something that physics students usually hate the most. If you've ignored the air. You probably know that a spinning football can curve in midair. So why can't a spinning bullet? That's a good question. So let's look at how the football really curves. As it moves through the air, the ball experiences a wind backwards flowing over it. Now, if it's spinning, then on this side, you can see that the ball is moving in the same direction as the air and it drags the air along with it. But on the other side, the ball is moving in the opposite direction of the air. So it pretty much stops the air dead. The net effect is that the ball ends up pushing the air to the right. And as a result, the air ends up pushing the ball to the left, Newton's third law. And that causes the ball to curve mid-flight. This force is called the Magnus effect, but turns out there is some controversy on whether it was Newton or Magnus who discovered it first, but let's not worry about that. The question now, the burning question now is, can Magnus effect save our movie? Can the Magnus effect curve the bullet? 
To answer that question, I need to be sure that we have understood the Magnus effect properly, right? So why not take another example before we investigate the bullet? This time let's consider a ping pong ball having a top spin moving through the air. Can you pause and predict what would be the direction of the Magnus force? All right, let's see. Here, the bottom part is moving in the same direction as the air, and so it drags the air upwards. And the top part is moving against the air, so it makes the air stop. And so the net effect is that the ball pushes the air up, and therefore the air pushes the ball down. And therefore the Magnus effect is downwards. That's why in table tennis, if you want to hit the ball really hard, so if you want to hit the ball really hard and make sure it actually lands, people hit it with a top spin. The downward Magnus force makes the ball land quicker, giving you a higher chance that the ball actually lands on the opposite court. Okay, now I think we are ready to tackle the bullet. So consider the spinning bullet moving through the air. Again, I want you to pause the video and think about what would be the direction of the Magnus force acting on the bullet. Okay, did you try? Something is different, right? So again, as the bullet is moving forward through the air, the air moves backward. And if you now look at the left side of the bullet, because it's spinning, the left side is moving upwards, which would drag the air up. And as a result, it pushes the air up and therefore the air would push that side of the bullet down. However, on the other side, notice the air bullet is moving down. And as a result, it would drag the air down and therefore the air would push the bullet up on this side. And so what's interesting over here is there are forces on both sides of the bullet and they're equal and opposite and they would cancel out. And therefore you would get no Magnus effect. But why is that happening? Well, let's go back and compare it with the case of the football and the ping pong ball. See, in the case of the football, we could find one side moving in the same direction as the air, causing it to drag along, and the other side moving in the opposite, making it stop. This asymmetry made the Magnus force work. Now, it's the same was the case in the ping pong ball. We could find one side of the ball moving in the same direction as the air, dragging it along, and the other side making it stop. The asymmetry caused the Magnus force. But in the case of the bullet, neither side is moving in the same direction or in the opposite direction of the air. They're both moving perpendicular to the air. And since there was no asymmetry, we get no Magnus force. But again, why is this difference arising? Well, for that, let's look at the axis of rotation. If you look at the football, the axis of rotation is vertical, and that is perpendicular to the direction of the air, which is backwards over here. Same is the case with the ping pong ball. If you look at the axis of rotation, which is horizontal over here, it is perpendicular to the direction of the air, which is again, backwards. But when it comes to the bullet, you can see that the axis of rotation is parallel to the direction of the air. That's why the Magnus force is not working out. So long story short, when the axis of spin is parallel to the direction of the air, Magnus force doesn't work which means bullets cannot curve due to the Magnus force. Magnus force can't save our movie. So end of story, right? Well, that's what I initially thought, but turns out not yet. When you shoot bullets over a really long range, I'm talking about kilometers, say like sniper rifles, turns out that bullets do curve. At first my reaction was, wait, what? We just saw that the Magnus effect cannot curve a bullet, so what's going on? Well, apparently there's another effect that can actually make our bullet curve. And after a lot of reading and I have linked some resources in the description below, I think I've finally been able to wrap my head around this. So here's what's going on. Without gravity, if you shoot a bullet, it would just come out straight, experiencing a wind backwards. But because there is gravity, bullets don't travel straight. Instead, they end up curving down. We usually don't notice it in short range because the bullet travels fast so quickly and it hits something before it has a chance to fall down. But over long ranges, the bullet does fall down. So yeah, this picture is highly exaggerated. And if you're wondering why doesn't the bullet tilt as a result of its falling down, well, that's because it's stabilized due to the spin and we'll get back to that in a moment. But because the bullet is falling down, it also experiences an upward push from the air. This upward push from the air has a very interesting effect on the bullet. What does it do? Well, of course, one thing is it slows down the bullet's fall, making it last longer in the air. 
But more interestingly, it also tends to turn our bullet. To see how, let's zoom in a little bit. Now, even though every single point on the bullet experiences a downward gravity, we can find one point at which all that force is concentrated. We call this the center of gravity. In a similar way, we can find one single point at which all the push from the air is concentrated. This is called the center of pressure. And for most bullets, the center of pressure lies in front of center of gravity. And so the push from the air tends to turn our bullet upwards. And so as the bullet comes towards you, you might expect that the bullet would end up turning like this, but that's not what happens because the bullet is also spinning. See, when you try to turn a spinning object, it behaves in a very odd way. So if you were to actually take this bullet and turn it upwards or try to turn it upwards, it wouldn't turn like this. Instead, because of the spin, it would turn sideways. I know that sounds weird, but if we analyze the situation carefully, it might make sense. So again, looking at the bullet, if you don't consider the spin, then the upward drag is gonna make our bullet turn this way, right? Now to analyze how the bullet would behave when it is spinning, I find it easier to analyze the forces acting on individual particles of the bullet. So let's consider these two particles of the bullet. And again, if the bullet was not spinning, then that upward drag would make our bullet turn like this. Now, if you look at the top particle, you see that it has slightly moved backward, which means there must be a component of a force acting backwards. And if you look at the bottom particle, it has slightly moved forward, so there must be a component of the force that's acting forward. And so now we know what is the effect of that upward push on those two particles. Now let's introduce our spin and see due to the spin how those particles behave under those forces. So because the bullet is spinning, this particle is moving in a circular motion this way, which means at the top, it has a velocity coming out of the page and at the bottom, it has a velocity going into the page. And now we have everything we need. We know the velocity of the particle, we know the direction of the force acting on the particle, we can now predict in what direction those particles would move, and based on that we can predict in what direction the whole bullet would move. Now would be a great idea to pause the video one last time and see if you can figure it out yourself. All right, let's do it. To get a better angle, let's look at the whole bullet from the top. So here I'm drawing the top view, the same particle over here spinning this way. At the top, it's moving to the right, and at the bottom, it's moving to the left. At the top, it has a force backward. At the bottom, it has a force forward. So, when it's at the top, what would be the direction in which the particle moves due to that force? This is actually familiar. If you throw a ball to the right, then we expect it to curve down, right? Which means the velocity vector of that ball turns towards the direction of the force. The same thing is gonna happen with our particle over here. At the top, the velocity vector is gonna turn towards the force, and at the bottom, again, the velocity vector is gonna turn towards the force, which means the particle will now go in a circle in this plane. But it is still a part of the bullet, which means the whole bullet must have turned this way. And this is how the upward push actually makes the bullet turn sideways. Pretty cool, huh? So putting it all together, as the bullet falls down, the air from the bottom starts pushing and produces a torque. And because the bullet is spinning, that torque makes the bullet turn sideways. And because the bullet turns sideways, the air from the front is only hitting one side of this bullet. That pushes the bullet to the right, and that causes the bullet to curve to the right. This effect is called the spin drift or the gyroscopic drift. So. Can this save our movie? Could the bending of the bullets really be due to spin drift? Let's see. And also if you're wondering what happened with the quality, my camera charger broke. And so I'm recording from my webcam and I'm recording after a few days, so yeah. Anyways, let's see if spin drift can save our movie. For a large spin drift, we would need a big sideward force. Meaning we would need that bullet to turn a lot so the air can push on one side and give the required sideward force. But what makes the bullet turn a lot? A lot of air pushing from the bottom. Remember, that's the one that's causing the torque on the bullet and making it turn, the gyroscopic effect. But what causes the air to push up in the first place? Well, the bullet falling down. In other words, a downward velocity. 
a higher the downward velocity of the bullet, more the air will be pushing up from the bottom. But how do you get a large downward velocity of the bullet? Well, we want the bullet to spend more time in the air. The more time the bullet spends in the air, the more it falls due to gravity and the more speed it gains in the downward direction, causing more air to be pushed from the bottom. So for short range, the bullet just doesn't spend enough time in the air to generate the required spin drift. And that's not looking great for our movie because most of the scenes that we see in the movie are in the short range. But what is the effect of swinging your arm? Does that have any effect on it? We've already seen swinging your arms makes the bullet come out faster from the gun. The same effect as the ping pong ball which means the bullet would hit the target quicker, spending even less time in the air. <laughs> so if anything, swinging your arm really fast ensures even less spin drift. So no, spin drift just cannot save this movie. I don't think anything can save this movie. This movie truly defies all the laws of physics. I really tried. So that's it for this video. I really think as far as I understand physics, there's no way by swinging your arms, you can make the bullet curves, even after considering all the different effects of gravity and air and every single aerodynamic properties that you can think of. I really had a lot of fun putting it all together and this idea of spin drift was new to me, so I felt like I learned a new thing. So let me know, how did you find this video in the comment section? Um, you would, If you would like to see me make more such videos, then yeah, do let me know. And yeah, do the like, subscribe, all of those things. And I'll see you soon, bye.